Da! Gentlemen, welcome back to the shop and the all CNC all the fucking time channel. Today we are all aboard choo choo the competence train. We're gonna program this thing in G code. As it happens, I'm somewhat of an expert, not on G code mind, but on dumbing things down to a point where I can comprehend them. And if I can comprehend them, anybody can comprehend them. Ain't nothing more endearing than a grown ass man stumbling around with a turkey on his head. That's me. I'm your turkey man. I give you Prudence, the safety goat. As you'll see momentarily, this is not my first time coding, programming. The trouble with confusers, and this, make no doubt about it, is a confuser, is they are only as dumb as the 200 pound gorilla clickety clacking on the keyboard. G code, geometric code was invented 50 years ago, uh, has all the user interface delight of assembly with the readability of hexadecimal. If you thought PLC programming language, ladder logic would give you eye cancer, <laughs> shields down partner. As a complete neophyte in robotic machining, it doesn't help when you get an expert giving you examples like this. Here's the thing. You have to remember all these G codes by rote or you're fucked. Do you know what a GOO is? Because I sure the fuck don't. If you were programming an Arduino and starting out in C sharp A, you would put at the back of that, you would explain what you are coding for. And that way when you're trouble shooting, you can see sort of half ass what you maybe did wrong. In this case, you get a bunch of gobbledygook and you gotta look up every single function. Pain in the ice. So what I've done is I've turned my phone off and I've given myself a problem to solve. That is face milling an aluminum block. Now, I could put that machine in Bridgeport mode and do it lickety split, not a stud in sight. However, that doesn't get us any closer to our goal of sort of half-ass knowing G-code. So, I opened up the word pad on the confuser and I started writing line by each the code, which I saved as a .nc file onto a USB. Now we're going to go over the machine. We're going to upload this and trial run it. In Haas's very own nomenclature, we have the USB uh, volume mounted, rather risque. Now we come over here to graphics and we hit the cycle start. The doors are open. The spindle will not start. What it's going to do, it's going to do a little... Yeah, that's our program there. So the Z is the green. We come down on a rapid, uh, come across on a rapid, and then we do a facing pattern. I got the GoPro while the Chinesium GoPro in the vise monitoring. So we'll be able to see the moves as we work through this program. My first program here, we're gonna go through the safety line and we'll do it single blocking. So the safety line is essentially, it selects GOO, which is rapids, and we've set it to 10% or 5% for the rapids. We've also set the feed to 10%. Now all this does, it resets the thing because this is stupid. This thing is so stupid. If you told it to drill through the center of the earth, it would try to drill through the center of the earth. So we're going to do this line. That's the safety line. So it hasn't moved any, but it's done everything. As we saw, the GOO selects the rapids, select the XY plane. Uh, G80 cancels all the CAN cycles. G90 sets the coordinate system to absolute, which means that instead of incrementing, if you put in uh, one, move one inch and then move another inch and then move another inch, if it's incrementing, it'll do that. But if you say X to one in absolute, and then you say X to one again, it doesn't move because it's already at X one inch. Okay? Okay. So now we move through each line. Because they're in brackets, it's just for the human to read. It's not, the machine is not reading it. Here, this next one, when we click it, we are going to uh, change to incremental mode. So like I said, if we put in X1, 
and X1 again, it's going to move two inches. Whereas if it was in the absolute mode, if we put in X1 and X1 again, it wouldn't move. Uh, it has to be an incremental move uh, mode for this G28 call, which is move all axes to zero. Now, this next one is going to call a tool change. M06 is the tool change and we want tool eight, which just so happens to be in the spindle. It's a half inch, three flute end mill, uh, zirconium nitride coated for aluminum. So it knows it's already there. Now, here we go. We're changed back to absolute positioning. We're calling a G54, which is the work offset. The work offset is just where the workpiece is. We've probed that. Well, we haven't probed it. I put it in manually because it's going to air mill over Prudence, the safety goat. And it's going to move us negative half an inch away and positive half an inch away in the Y direction. Here we go. Now we're going to set the spindle, spindle speed rather at 5,000 ripples and MO3 is uh, start it clockwise, which is forward. There we go. You can tell it came on because the light's dimmed. Now what we are going to do is, um, well, we're going to release the schmoo, but I've, I bypassed that. So that M8 turns on the, uh, the coolant. We're not going to do that, but we are going to set the tool offset length of tool 02. No, I changed that. It's tool 08. Um, and then we are going to go a quarter inch above that. So this is where it gets a little hairy. The line that's, that's highlighted is the line that's ready to rock the next time you hit cycle start. So I'll hit cycle start and away we go. Now we're going to linear move two thou down at a 25 inch per minute feed rate. And now we're going to move the X axis and start milling at a feed rate of 50 inches per minute and the operation is stopped so we can move on to the next one. Now we're gonna move the Y direction away from us by half an inch. We're basically done. The M08, we turn off the coolant and we wrap it uh, to zero the Y and the Z axis, Z first. Actually at the same time so yeah, that's a, a lesson there. If you want them to be at different times, you have to put it on another line. So what I should have done, because I always want the Z to come up so we clear everything before we start moving sort of sideways. Okay, lesson learned. Then the M5 is the stop spindle. The M19, I like to do this, is orient the spindle. The M30 just ends everything and cancels the tools offsets and then brings us back to the top of the program. No crashes. Okay, we know the program is not going to blow up, so now what we'll do is we'll get the Renishaw probe out here and we will optically probe this, which isn't, it, it physically contacts. I do not know why you'd ever buy a CNC without one of these things. It is so convenient. And apparently it's quite delicate, but I haven't broke mine yet. So from experience, I prefer to get it as close as possible to the coroner on account of it skip faulting. If it doesn't hit a surface when it's expecting something and the whole fucking machine's got to be reset. It's a real right pain in the cunning linguals. I'll tell you what. Okay, so we have our work offsets input into G54 now, and we're moving all three axes at the same time, which is dangerous. I'll have to change that code. 
because we as humans have been trained from a very early age to think in two dimensions, well, three dimensions, but not three axes, the, the third dimension being time. But essentially, we all are trained uh, to look at maps, you know, two-dimensional representations. So it's tough for us to, to have things move in this way and that way and not have them collide. Now we're moving to the safe position for the tool change. Uh, nice and out of the way there. There's our tool. T08. Got my finger on the feed hold. We got no coolant. And I stopped it. It's a good, good to have a look, see at the Z. Let me show you. Here's our program running. And we have a quarter inch to go on the Z. So having a look now, we'll see if we're gonna hit the vise or not. Looks like we're okay. Seem to be doing okay. Move over, yeah, okay. I think that's the one. Nope. Oh. A little fuck up there. That was weird. The only thing I could see was this Y was minus one, no decimal or nothing. So I put minus one with uh, one thou on the end of it. That would have been the move where it did that wonky little uh, spinneroo there. We'll give that a try. And we're going to cut another five thou off that. Now we got to hit reset, otherwise it'll start from where I highlighted the program. Could be disastrous, so you always hit reset twice, I'm told, just for safety's sake. Here we go, we're moving through our regular little cycle. Goes home. This is obviously a waste of time, but just for safety's sake. And then we'll go down to 25% rapids. Stop it here, see how far we got to go in Z. Inch and three quarters. Looks good. Start cutting, we move Y-O. There we go. There, it worked. So that negative one, it didn't like that for some reason. It wanted negative, well the thing is it, it automatically truncates if you just put one dot zero 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 it truncates it to one so that's a really odd little glitch i'm going to try that again see if we can replicate it okay so we're back to the y minus one we'll see what happens here we made our first pass second pass Yeah, fucking weird, man. If it truncates on its own and doesn't have the decimal, it fucks right off on you. So you gotta make sure you got the decimals in there. Ah, it's all coming back to me. I don't think it's a glitch. I think it's the Haas control, pain in the Haas. It needs that dot at the end. I'm changing the feed rate here, doubling the feed rate. And now we're gonna give her a while. Attempt number, what are we on? 27, something like that. Full feed speed, full rapids. Release the schmoo! Ah! There! That only took about four hours of fucking dicking around for a 30 second job. Sounds about right. Thanks for watching. Keep your dick in advice. I might be laying in a ditch, but I'm looking up at the stars.